Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter um, at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, the Nebraska the Encompass Live is the commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and it will be posted to our website for you to watch later at your convenience. Um, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for anyone who, I think everyone for this today's show is here is from Nebraska, but just in case you aren't or you're watching from elsewhere, you don't know, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. We are simple, similar to the state libraries in other states. So we provide training and resources um, and uh, grants and all sorts of things to all types of libraries in the state. So you'll find shows at Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives. Uh, really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we bring in guest speakers to talk um, on to come on Encompass Live sometimes, talk about things they're doing in their libraries from across Nebraska and across the country, um, and even from outside the country. Um, you'll see some, some presenters um, outside the United States. Uh, um, but we also have commission staff, library commission staff that do presentations for us as well. And that's what you have today. Today I am doing double duty. <laughs> I am the host of the show, of course, but I am also your presenter for today um, because today we are going to be talking about uh, Nebraska's Public Library Accreditation Program. Um, in addition to being the um, host of Encompass Live, um, my main title here at the Nebraska Library Commission, I am the Library Development Director, and Library Development is the uh, department at the Library Commission that handles public library accreditation. Um, so I am in charge of um, this program that we have here. Uh, and today we're going to go over a quick one hour overview of um, the basics of the program. So if you're interested in it, um, if you've never um, done an, um, have been accredited, your library has never been accredited before, this is a perfect show for you. Uh, if you just want a little refresher, um, that's fine too. Um, so this will be good for anyone who's done accreditation who's never done it. Um, you'll also see here that I have a link here that says public library accreditation workshops are now open. I do have, and I'm gonna open this up in a new tab here, um, longer workshops coming up at the beginning of June. So the, the full in-depth workshops will be, those, those what those will be. Um, there are four dates, um, June um, 4th, 16th, 11th, and 12th, um, two of them in the morning and two of them in the afternoon. Um, the same information will be presented at every single one of these four workshops. Um, we're just doing it at varying times and varying dates so that everyone has a chance to attend. So if you're looking for a more, when, when, you know, after today's show, so just be like I said, a quick one hour-ish intro, the basics, um, just to get you um, a head start on knowing what it's all about. But these will be the full in-depth workshops that go through everything step by step. So please do um, definitely register for one of those in addition to watching today's show. All right, and if you do have any questions, anything you want to know about accreditation, anything you're unsure about, um, anything you're confused about, type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, and I will um, pay attention, um, keep my eye on that, and I will answer any questions you have as we're going through this this morning. All right, so first, uh, the public library, a public library accreditation program that we have here in Nebraska, um, this is something that we run here out of the Library Commission. Uh, there is, not a there's no national body that handles public libraries and needing to be accredited this is done um, by st state by state so different states have different requirements different programs uh, some don't have an accreditation program in some states if you are if you're coming to nebraska from elsewhere you might not have this at all um, and uh, and they're all they are all um different versions of it. So what we're talking about today is just how it's done here in Nebraska and just how it's handled here through the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, other states, they would have their own programs, their own rules, and their own ways of doing it. So you have to pay attention there. 
Um, and but this is it's actually I think is a good thing. There is not an overreaching national body telling us how to do it. We can customize our program to our state, and that is what we have done with our. Um, accreditation program here in Nebraska. And I'll get into more of the details of how that works um, a little later this um, this morning. Um, so just put that out there first. This is just our program for Nebraska. So first question I probably I get from a lot of people is why? Why should I be accredited? What's the point? What's the purpose? What do what, what do me do, what do I or my library get out of this? Um, well the purpose from accreditation, our accreditation program has been around since the um, I believe the mid 80s, mid 1980s. And it was really to ensure that our public libraries were providing good library service to their communities. And as a way of um, having benchmarks that you can meet to see, are you doing um, good things in your community? Are you doing the kind of things that um, a library should be doing as far as, far as um, what um, here at the Library Commission, um, we think. Um, this is also um, these, these guidelines that we put in here. We're not just us at the Library Commission dictating to you all. We bring together teams of librarians from across the state to determine what is important in libraries. What should libraries be doing? What can they be doing? And what would we look at to see if they were providing um, a really good service to their uh, communities. So you've got those minimum standards that you can reach for. So if you're wondering, are we doing good enough in this area? What are other libraries doing? Um, how do we you know, show our community and our administration in our city, our city manager, our, our mayor, uh, our library board, that we are doing the right things or good things? Um, this will, you can show them here is our accreditation proving that we have gone through all of these steps and that we are, um, using the, the you know, municipality's money in good ways, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's something to be proud of, as it says here, and celebrate if you get accredited. Uh, we do send out a certificate that you can hang, frame and hang up on the wall if you want to. Um, you can also, we also provide um, electronic files of a seal that says, you know, accredited in the year, so you can use that in all of your social media or on anything that you um, print that you hand out. Um, our regional library systems also provide um, stickers like window clings you can put on the window of your library so you can you know let everyone know that you are an officially accredited library and spread the word about that. Uh, the program, as I said, uh, the guidelines are um, originally developed by um, a group of librarians in the state in conjunction with us, the Library Commission and some of our regional library system directors. And it has been updated over the years. Um, changes have been made. Um, but to try and make it um, more accurate or easier for libraries to um, work with the program. Uh, one big change that happened just last year was the amount of time, um, the length of time that your accreditation is valid for. Accreditation is now um, good for five years. Uh, previously, it was a three-year accreditation, so you may hear about that or you may have previous information that says that. Um, but uh, we changed that to five years um, a couple of years ago, there's actually something had been talked, we had talked about this for a while beforehand. Uh, we had had lots of comments from libraries and library directors that uh, three years was too short a time to uh, reevaluate what we're doing and, and adjust it. We need longer. It's just too, too, too quick. Um, and also, when the COVID-19 pandemic started in 2020, we uh, kind of ended up, ended up falling into a five-year <laughs> process. Uh, but because of the pandemic, for two years, we uh, postponed um, accreditation. I put a hold on it, put a pause on it. Uh, there's plenty of other things going on and we did not need library, libraries did not need to be worrying about accreditation. Uh, so uh, libraries who had been due to be re-accredited re in 2020 actually ended up getting their um, accreditation extended for two years and falling into a five-year process anyways, a five-year renewal anyway. And so we just made that official when we brought accreditation back. <laughs> um, um, so it is now um, good for five years. You only have to go through this process um, once every five years. Now, a lot of because this is a program that we do here through the Library Commission, I'll also mention not everything is totally in stone. Uh, we can um, make accommodations for libraries who who need to have something you know changed on their accreditation. Um, I do give extensions um, if you if something comes up and you can't do. Um, do your reaccreditation when you need to, like, well, just recently, I know we have, I don't believe we've heard from any libraries that had any issues with the recent tornadoes, but if tornado had come through your town and you, you're dealing with that, and you're, but you're also due for re, um, renewing your accreditation, I'll give an extension. I did it when um, 
Uh, we had the flooding back in 2019, gave libraries extensions. If you are a brand new library director and you just started this week, I actually have an email from one library director right now, um, I won't make you do accreditation your first time out, <laughs> your first, you know, your first year being a library director. There's a lot of plenty of things you need to be dealing with. This is something that we can hold off on for a year. So um, reach out to me if you are having any issues um, and you need to get some sort of extension. Um, we can do just a few months extension or we can do a year extension. I am flexible. So what are some of the benefits of being accredited? Uh, obviously, you know, I mentioned just something to be proud of, showing your community and your administration that you're doing great things to the library, but um, money <laughs> is a big part of it as well. Um, all accredited libraries can receive certain funding from us um, and from other organizations, grants from other organizations, grants from the Library Commission. Um, if you are not accredited, you are not eligible for any of this. So uh, state aid for public libraries is the uh, first thing that we have that you can receive if you are, but you have to be accredited. This is something that Sam Shaw here at the Library Commission um, handles. Um, e, and uh, there's a, a flat amount that every library will receive. And then if you are at certain levels of accreditation, we have our three different levels of accreditation, you can receive a little bit extra um, money. Um, we have our bronze, silver, and gold are our three levels of accreditation. Um, if you reach silver level, you get an extra $200 in state aid. And if you reach gold, uh, you receive an extra $400. So that's just funding that's sent to you from the Library Commission um, for you to do with as you like. Uh, we also have grants here through the Nebraska Library Commission, which you must be accredited, your library must be accredited um, in order for you to apply for. That's our CE and training grants, our internship grants, our library improvement grants, and our youth grants for excellence. <clears throat> so if you are thinking about applying for any of those and you're not accredited yet, um, you could become accredited this year and then these grants open up usually in the fall, you'd be able to apply for our next round of grants code that open up in the fall. Um, in addition to that, the Nebraska Department of Economic Development and the USDA have both said that a requirement for their grants is that uh, libraries um, are, are accredited as well. Um, and both of those grants are good for if you need to do construction. Um, our library improvement grants now at the Nebraska Library Commission, because how the, the rules are for those, cannot be used for doing like renovations or building a new library. Um, but these um, block community development block grants and the USDA grants and loans are both for your actual facility. So if you need to do some sort of updating to your building itself, those are two grants that are great. Um, to apply for, um, but you do need to be accredited. So, um, so that's something to bring to your board or your um, um, municipalities. Uh, if they're asking why are we going through all this process of doing accreditation, this is, could be a good reason to convince them to go through all the work um, because um, you will be eligible for all this funding. If your library is not accredited, you are not eligible for it. Um, and I will mention too, it does not cost anything to be accredited, to go through the accreditation process. I should mention that there's no fee, there's no nothing like that, it's all free. It's just your time and going through the process. Uh, as I just mentioned, there are um, three levels of accreditation, um, gold, silver, and bronze. Um, and yes, it is based, it was the idea did come about um, from the Olympics. <laughs> uh, the story I've been told is that um, we were trying to decide what to call them and the Olympics were happening at the time and someone threw this out as an idea and we ran with it. So um, our accreditation program here in Nebraska is based on earning um, points. Um, there are certain guidelines that you can reach and we'll look, we're gonna look quickly at the application so you can see what some of those guidelines are. And each guideline is worth a certain number of points. You could get up to 275 points in total um, but you only need to, need to reach a certain level of points, a certain number of points to um, get bronze and then silver and gold. So 100, 175 for bronze, 200 for silver, 250 points for gold. And the reason we um, do this on a points level, um, it, every library is different. Every library is unique and you have certain things in your, that are important to your community or certain things that you can do. Um, that other libraries can't do possibly, or that you, know, you might not be able to do certain side of, kind of program um, that would earn you points, but you can do other things in your community, and that's still good. So libraries are very, it's very local. Uh, what does your, your people in your community need? That's what you respond to. 
um, our, the previous incarnation of accreditation, you had to do a whole, you know, do all these things to reach bronze level. And then here's the, the I mean, silver, silver, you got to do all of these things. Um, that got restricting. If you missed just one item, you didn't get the, the level. So um, this got changed up back in 2013, and it changed to this just earning points. Everything is available to everybody to earn points on, and then you may earn points in this area. Someone else, another library will earn points in another area, but you can both still reach silver or gold or whatever um, level you're up to. Um, earning the points for what you do in your community. So it seems much more equitable and um, help, um, encouraging libraries just to do what your community needs. Um, we do have a list here if you want to know who is um, accredited and, or what if your library is accredited and at what level is a list of um, the status of all the libraries. So um, whoops, there it is. <laughs> um, and you can see the level that the library is at, the year they expired, um, and then um, the colonial system they are. If we have a link to a library's website, we'll link to that as well. So you can see here, um, you can look up your library. I know we, I've, I checked to see who's registered for today's shows, and I have some of you are coming up for accreditation this year, 2024. Um, as you can see here, um, one right at the top of the list, Ainsworth, they're due this year, so they will be working on um, updating and renewing their accreditation. Uh, some of you may be in future years, and that's great to get an idea of things ahead of time. Um, some of you may not be accredited at all and just looking into it for the, at the, for the first time. Um, and that's great. So you can always check here to see when your library's accreditation expires. Um, as I said, though, we do send out certificates and letters letting you know this as well, but I know over time those can get lost <laughs> uh, possibly um, in, in your library, but you can always come here and check to see the status of your library and any other libraries if you're interested. Um, accreditation, the, the year of accreditation is due, is, is valid, good through the end of the year. So if it says 2024, the accreditation is good through December 30th, 1st of this year. Um, the year that your accreditation expires is when you are then going through the process of becoming re-accredited so that as of January 1st of the next year, you, your, your accreditation is maintained. There's no break. <laughs> so while you're re, you know, renewing and going through this, this process, your library is still accredited. Um, and then it just rolls over and it starts as of January 2025 forward for this year, for example. Uh, the process to um, be accredited or renew your accreditation actually starts in July. Um, and you saw here at the top of this, there's an, a, a warning message up here that the um, accreditation process starts July 1st. Um, on July 1st, I send out emails to all libraries who are due for reaccreditation. So all the libraries for accreditation is expiring at the end of 2024. And libraries who have not previously been accredited, so we're unaccredited libraries, but have submitted our public library survey and our library commission supplemental survey. Um, this is the first requirement for accreditation is that you do the public library survey. Um, and you do have to maintain and keep doing that every year, of course. This is also something that Sam does, Sam Shaw. So um, that's the kind of the first step of being accredited is making sure you get your public library survey and our supplemental survey in, because that is then the basis of me inviting new libraries to become accredited for the first time. Uh, the survey usually opens in November and closes in February. The dates, of course, vary every year. So that has been done for this upcoming year. And we now look at that survey data to see who submitted it. And um, then I invite based on that uh, survey. Um, uh, those, those emails go out on July 1st. So that's when you'll know if you have been invited to either renew or uh, become accredited for the first time. Uh, then you have an online application that you submit. That's where you earn all your points. So you, it will, um, you'll see all the different items in there. And we'll look at that quickly in a second here. Um, and then you also have to do what we call our community needs response plan. Um, this is a separate document that you just write up and um, mail or email to me, whichever works for you. Um, and we'll talk about the details of that. Um, kind of like a strategic plan for your library, but a little more specific on just responding to the needs in your community. Uh, both your accreditation application and your plan are due um, by October 1st at the latest. 
um, you can submit them ahead of time. Um, you know, they, they're available. The go, the both. You can start sending me things July 1st, as of when I open things up. But October 1st is the deadline, and then um, I will once I have both your plan and your online application, I evaluate them together. Um, some things that you mentioned in your community's response plan are related to questions on your app, online application. So I do need both of those things together to look at and make sure you said the same thing in both places <laughs> and everything like matches up. So once I have both of those, I work on evaluating them. I may have questions for you and we'll go back and forth with that. And at the very latest, by December 31st, you'll know um, if you are accredited or re-accredited, um, if your level has possibly changed, if you've earned more points, and then we'll send out a new certificate uh, a new letter and certificate letting you know that you have been um, accredited. Um, but December 31st is the ultimate deadline by, by everything is, is done so that you know that as of January of the next year, you're fully accredited. Um, now, as I said, things aren't totally in stone. If there's some reason you can't get everything to me by October 1st, just let me know. Um, I will send reminders letting you know, hey, the deadline's coming up. But if you're having issues or something has come up, uh, just let me know and I can give extensions. I can give extensions for a month or two if you need. Um, if you know you can get it done this year, but you just need another couple of months, that's fine. Or if it's something very extreme like you know, natural disaster, um, new director, something like that, um, I can give you know, a year extension as well. So just keep in, keep in communication with me all right um does anybody have any questions yet anything you're wondering about i'm going to get into the um, requirements next year i just want to make sure if anybody does have anything um just check it over here okay um there we go okay um, does anybody have any questions? You can type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, anything you're wondering about, if I'm going to mention something, anything specifically about your library that you're wondering about, or just in general? <clears throat> All right, well, type in things whenever you think about it, not a problem. Okay, so in order to apply for accreditation, either for the first time or to be reaccredited, re and to maintain your library's accreditation, um, you have to do the public that public library survey that I already mentioned, um, that Sam Shaw puts out, as well as our supplemental survey. We have some extra questions that we ask here from the Nebraska Library Commission that are not on the National Public Library Survey. So um, you have to answer both of those, <clears throat> um, and I'll. Uh, explain here to that so in order to apply for the first time and be reaccredited you have to do this survey so that first year but also to maintain your library's accreditation you have to keep up with these things as well um, so during that five-year period when you're accredited you still have to submit the these surveys every year if you miss one your accreditation can be revoked uh, so do keep that in mind. It's not just a one-time thing, and then you can wait five years to your survey, do your survey or something. You do have to maintain um, this throughout the five years that your library is um, accredited. Um, this I have a link here to the survey and the supplemental survey if you want to know more about that. Um, we also have 12 minimum qualifications. So the second thing is 12 minimum qualifications your library has to meet um, just to start out with. You don't, you know, this is just every library has to meet these qualifications. Um, you see here we again have the notice that accreditation starts July 1st. Um, and this actual page here is the beginnings of going into the accreditation application form too. That you'll go here and you'll check off these 12 minimum qualifications. Um, All right, um, so right off the bat, everyone does have to do these 12. Beyond these 12, it's just whatever um, your library does um, is, is, is um, personal to your library. But to start with, everyone does have to do all of these things. Um, many of these are related to Nebraska library statutes. There are Nebraska, there are library laws, um, ways how libraries are required to be um, established in Nebraska based in the art in our Nebraska statutes um, and certain things you have to follow if you are a public library or a public body. Um, we have in in our application form we have um, a little question mark um, in a yellow circle that will always pop up 
um, a help page that has links to whatever we're talking about, more explanation about a particular question or a certain guideline. So you can see here, there's links to the different statutes that um, some of these apply to, um, and just information about um, things on our web page. And then once you get into the application form, more links to um, helpful uh, websites and information. So when you're um, anywhere in your application, look for that little question mark if you're wondering, what does this mean? That'll tell you. So for the first your first 12 minimum qualifications, you have to be legally established under Nebraska state statutes. Uh, legally established here in Nebraska means that there has been some sort of resolution or ordinance um, uh, enacted by your uh, municipality saying, yes, we are officially wanting to uh, officially establishing and creating a public library. Um, and you have to have create have a board of at least a minimum of five members, a library board. Once you've got those two things, you have a library, um, legally established library. Now there are libraries out there that do not are not done that way, and that's fine. You are you are allowed to have a library um, in any form that you will, you like. Doesn't have to be um, you know legal. Just just in order to be designated as legally established, um, you have to meet those criteria. Um, you need to be in compliance with all um, Nebraska library laws, rules, regulations, and any of their local laws. Um, so like I said, you look at the help page for all of the laws that relate to Nebraska libraries, federal code of regulations. Um, I do specify here the specific sections that do relate, relate to libraries. Um, Open Meetings Act laws, your library board must follow Open Meetings Act laws because they are um, a public body. Um, confidentially, confidentiality of library records. There's a statute about that, about keeping library um, information, your, your users' library information private, um, American with Disabilities Act, et cetera. So there's all these links here, the different laws that you do need to be in compliance with. Um, having You have to have a board, either a governing board or an advisory board. There's two different versions of that, that um, has bylaws and, as I mentioned, follows that Open Meetings Act um, law. Um, we did do, we have done um, webinars about the Open Meetings Act on our weekly Encompass live show here. So I would definitely recommend going and searching our archives for that too, if you wanna know more about Open Meetings Act. Um, Okay, uh, then um, your fourth criteria and your fourth and fifth are related. Um, your board, your library board must be certified and your library director must be certified. Now these are um, two other programs that we have here through the Library Commission uh, for also uh, similar to our accreditation program, not a national program that runs it. We just do this um, for our own state. Other states do it differently. Some states have certification programs for the boards and library staff, some don't. Um, while we're talking about these here, I'm going to pop back over to our main accreditation patient page here because I'm going to show you here on our Library Commission website over here, we have these flyout menus on the left, and there is one here that is for accreditation and certification, and they are bundled together because they relate to each other. In order for your library to be accredited, both your library board and your library director must be certified. And so these are separate programs that your board goes through and your library director goes through. Um, boards, and there's more information on all of these pages about it. Um, what this entails is for library boards doing a certain number of CE continuing education hours, 20 hours of continuing education they must do um, over a three-year period. Certification is a three-year um, period is what it's good for. Um, so as a whole, if you have five board members um, and it's, it's um, it's the, the board as a whole, not individually. Not each individual has to do 20 hours, but the board as a whole. So each board member has to do a total of four hours um, themselves. Um, they can do these at the same time. You all could watch an hour long webinar like this one on your board and you, you earn four hours of CE. Each person earns an hour for watching um, this um, accreditation workshop. Um, 
We have links for how you can submit your credits. Um, there is a library board manual. I also highly recommend looking at the library board manual, both you as library director or your board members um, that we have put together here. Uh, Holly Duggan is our continuing education coordinator. She's in charge of both of these programs and keeping these manuals up to date. Um, really good guides to what your board is supposed to be, what it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to be run. Um, we have a companion guidebook uh, for the directors, public library director's guidebook, same kind of thing. What does a director need to do to be a library director? Highly recommend taking a look at that. It's got all the basics of what you need to do if you're new to being a director or just want a refresher on something. Um, take a look at that. Um, so boards have to do 20 hours. Librarians have to either have a degree of some sort, a library related degree, or do our basic skills classes to earn, um, educate, learn about being a librarian and do um, the continuing education credits as well. Um, 45 hours of CE over a the same three year period. Um, the classes that you take, um, webinars, all sorts of different things are eligible for this. So um, we do not require that library directors have a library degree in Nebraska um, in order to be certified or to be a director at a library um, or for their library to be accredited. Um, if you have a degree, that's great. If not, we have our basic skills classes that you can take that will get you the education and the knowledge for being a um, a library director um, and library directors and staff can take this library um, this is our public librarian certification so if you're a director you need to be certified in order to, for your library to be accredited but additional library staff can also do the certification program as well um, this gets them a certificate saying that they've gone through this um, and then that you do can you can earn some extra points on your library's accreditation if more library staff are also certified <clears throat> Um, and so you can see here whether or not you have a degree, if you need to do basic skills classes or um, not. So as you can see, if you have any sort of a degree um, in library science, you don't have to do the basic skills classes. You just show us that you've done that. And then you just keep up with your CE hours each um, three year period, those 45 hours of CE. Um, if you don't have a library related degree, you do our basic skills classes and keep up with the uh, three hours of CE, um, 45 hours of CE. Um, we have links to everything about our basic skills program. There's a whole bunch of courses. Um, there's uh, six, um, there's required courses here. You do all these six to start out with, and then you have a whole bunch of different electives. These are all done online. These are not in-person classes. These, um, they're done at certain times of the year. Um, and you can check our schedule um, throughout there. They're done throughout the year. Um, you do not have to do all of these in one year either. They're offered every year on a rotating schedule. So you can do um, a few this year, a few the second year, a few the third year, and gradually over the three years, you should be able to get all of them um, done and taken care of. For our boards, we have the same information, health information for library boards. They don't have any sort of special programming that we have, like basic skills. They can just do, um, board members can do anything, webinars, workshops, go to um, conferences and events um, and earn CE for that. And as I said, it's 20 hours in total for the entire board. So each individual person only has to do four hours over a three year period. Pretty easy. Um, we do have special programs that we pay for to um, that um, are out there that you can do if you want to. Um, trustee Academy courses and short takes for trustees all from the United for Libraries um, group. Um, they are part of the American Library Association specifically for friends, foundations, trustees, board members, lots of good useful information there. So we pay for you to have access to those courses, especially for your board members. Uh, I definitely highly recommend either one of them. Um, they're great to just get your board members up to speed on what they're supposed to do as a library board member. All right, so board has to be certified and your director has to be certified. Um, uh, onto the rest of these criteria here, um, the 12 minimum. Um, any questions about certification for a board or a director? I can answer some quick questions if you have them here. If not, um, like I said, Holly Duggan, our CE coordinator, she's in charge of both those programs and can get you um, answer any more in-depth questions you might have. All right, so on to the rest of our criteria here. Um, you need to receive local funding from either your city, village, county, whatever you have. So you have to have some sort of a budget um, so your community is being supported. Um, a question came in, of course. Um, 
if a new employee is working towards certification, do we still get the points? Yes, and that also counts for the library director as well. That's a good question to ask because um, uh, I should have mentioned that. Um, you don't have to have completed your certification because it does take you know the, the amount of time. So for example, if someone's a new library director, they just started this year and they just signed up for the program or a new staff person and they just start taking classes, yes, that counts. That counts as being certified and that counts as um, extra points uh, on your uh, accreditation application as well. Um, as long as we can see that you're actively and continuing working towards it and you've taken a class or something and you're doing it, doing it then um, it counts, yep. Um, and we do keep track of that. We do have staff here, Holly and other staff that track and we um, remind you that you're, you're coming up on your deadline, you still need this many hours. So we will help you and nudge you to keep up with those uh, as well. All right, um, so local funding. Um, as I already said, you have to do the public library survey and the supplemental survey. Um, you have, have to have paid library staff. Um, you cannot be a volunteer run, only volunteer run library. Um, now this is paid staff during regular hours. Uh, I, we do understand sometimes you need to have volunteers come in to help um, if, you know, just to keep it open a certain number of hours, or um, if the library staff is off at a conference or a meeting and you have volunteers or board members that come in and help just keep the library open, but they aren't paid, that's okay. <laughs> you can have that mixture, but you have to have some basic paid staff. Um, you cannot be a completely volunteer run library in order to be accredited. You can still have a library, we're happy to have you have a library, but you can't be accredited if you're not paying your staff. Uh, the director has to have an email address that they check regularly. This is this may sound like a weird requirement, but um, we this is how we reach out to you, and you must keep up with that um, because that is how we will um, get all or everything to you and communicate with you. Um, you have to make your basic services available without charge. This is something that our state statutes say. So basically, you know, loaning of materials, using the library, answering reference questions, um, all of that you must um, not charge for. Um, you also have to provide internet access at no charge. You cannot charge per the minute or charge people to use the internet in your library. Um, now, there's other things you can have, um, you know, people pay for. Um, oftentimes, obviously, you know, late fees or returning fees. Uh, sometimes you've got material fees for certain programs that you offer. That's okay. But we're just talking about the basic, you know, library services, circulating things, giving, helping with reference, answering questions, using your materials in the library, and internet all has to be free. And then the last requirement is also done by per state statute. You have to do an annual report to whoever is your governing body, um, your city, township, county, whatever. Um, so just an annual report. Here's what we did the last year um, in the library. And what you'll see once you answer all of those 12, it then says based on that, this, you can apply for accreditation. Now, um, so this button pops up. Now, if I do that right now, um, it's going to have you log in. Um, the each application form is personal to your library and we use the bibliostat bibliostat <laughs> username and password this is um, the same id and password that you use to submit your public library survey so rather than have you make up or remember some new password we just use the same one and then that gets you into your library's personal um, accreditation application i'm not going to go into that right now because as i said the process officially opens up on july 1st so i'm not going to go through a live form to show you that you can look up your password and id in case you don't know it and um, get that sent to you if you can't remember um, i need to get back to my accreditation page here boom all right so that's the 12 minimum qualifications that you have to meet. Um, after you meet those, then you can go into the actual application form itself. Um, and I'm going to go into that in a second, but the um, last thing I want to mention is that in the other cri criteria to in order to apply in the first place is to write a community needs response plan. Um, this used to be called, called a strategic plan, but it's not really a strategic plan for your whole library. It is a plan that is based on looking at your needs in your community and personalizing a, pro, a plan that will answer some of those needs. Um, it's unique to your library, unique to what your community needs to do. Uh, I have a whole, we have a whole separate page all about community needs response planning. And this, we go into much detail, we go into all the details of this, um, in our three hour workshops that I've got coming up at the beginning of June. So I'm not gonna go into the details here, but you can see here, there's certain things you have to have. You assess your community, you see what kind of problems that are out there and see if there's anything the library can respond to. 
that's kind of the general overview of it. We have a lot of resources here and we have examples of other libraries plans. Definitely look at these other ones. These are good ones that I've had submitted here before over the years and um, you can use these as a template for your own. We also have a whole bunch of resources here that you can use um, to create your plan. I'm not going to go into all the details of this today. As I said, this is for the three hour longer workshop, but you can look at all this information. You do need to come up with one of these plans. Now, if you have a previous plan that you already did, you know, from the last time you were accredited and you're being reaccredited, you just need to update it. You don't necessarily need to um, write a whole brand new one from scratch. So don't panic that every five years you have to write a whole new one. Pull out your old one, see what needs to be updated. Obviously, um, demographic data would be need to be updated because um, your census data has changed. Um, goals you have, programs you'll be doing, what's going on in your community is going to change. Um, if you don't have your old one and you can't find it because it's been so long or you're the new person and you don't even know where it is, call me, email me. I should have all of your old ones that I can get to you um, that you can then work off of. All right, so um, like I said, the plan, um, we go into much more detail during um, the longer workshop. So um, in order to apply, that's what you've got to have. You do the public library survey or supplemental survey, you meet those 12 qualifications and you have a plan. Uh, once you have all of that, then you can go and look at the accreditation application form. And this is where you earn all of your points. This is the, the big part. Now the, the community's response plan can take some time to work on. So that is definitely something to start early as you can. Um, you'll work with your board, with other people in the community to see how you're gonna write it up. Um, the accreditation application you can look at as well ahead of time to see um, what kind of things you can earn points in. Um, right off the bat, there are some things that are automatically filled in on this form based on your public library survey data. Uh, you've already submitted lots of statistical information for us and we don't want to make you re submit it, report it to us again. So this is also why we need to have you submit the public library survey. We automatically pre-fill some of the questions with the answers that you've given us on your survey data and it's already in there. We also do um, some peer comparisons. So um, to see how you're doing in relation to libraries that are similar to yours. Um, this is based on your legal service area. So the population, the size of your community, we compare you to communities that are um, similar in size to you. When you log into your personalized accreditation application, there is a button you click on, a blue button, that uh, shows, you who you, shows you who your peer libraries are. So you can see who you are being com compared to. Uh, these, um, rather than just saying you must have a local income of this much, you must be open these number of hours, et cetera, um, that was just too, you know, hard you know cutting it off at a certain point and we don't know what's good for each community so rather than doing that we compare you to communities of the same size saying basically all the same size communities same type pop same similar income um in order to earn these peer comparison points you have to either um meet the average of all of your peer libraries or the median which is the value at the midpoint when you do the statistics so you can either meet either one of those um, and earn those points. And we do all that math for you, so don't worry about that either. All of this is also information we pull in from your public library survey, all these peer comparisons. So this is just automatically pre-filled into your application form, the math is done, and then it shows if you earn the points or not. Um, we did have some, some libraries have uh, questioned if just looking at size of community is, is all that we should be looking at because lots of communities, even if they are the same size population wise, they do have more support and some live, um, some are supported more with a bigger budget or a less budget or just more people coming from like the rural areas and using the library and some don't have that happening. There's so many different things happening. Um, but we did some research on this to see if we added in other criteria to the peer comparisons, would that change anyone's points? Like not just is it, um, are they po legal service population similar, but also um, looking at the income of people in the community or um, the budget of libraries, um, or if they serve a county and as a, opposed to serve a whole county as opposed to just a single you know, town. And we threw around, we did this and tested it out with lots of different communities and it did not change the numbers at all. <laughs> um, all of those things um, tossed into the mix 
the library still earned the same points or still didn't earn the same points regardless. So um, rather than having to go through, you know, 10 different criteria and do all that, we just said, okay, we tried, we looked, it didn't make any major difference. We're going to stick to just this one criteria of comparing you by legal service, doing the peers by legal service area size, basically, you know, community size. All right, so I'm going to show you the application now. Um, all these links here that say accreditation application, this is where you would go to actually apply. And when you open that up, it will say meet the 12 criteria, click the button like what I did before. But since the application is not open right now, you can't go through and actually look at that. What we have for you is a preview application. So this is just a static page that just shows here is the questions that you will be asked when you do log into your library's personalized um, application. So I can show you this um, here. Um, when it's your library's application, at the top it will say application for so-and-so public library. Um, and there's some basic info here. Um, if you meet a guideline from the public survey data, you get a green check. If you don't meet the guideline from that public survey data that's pulled in, you get a red X. Um, just a reminder here of what the different points are. Um, the reminder that there is that yellow question um, circle in the question mark after many questions that will pop open the help. Um, and when you're in the application here, you can see it jumps to that section of the help page. It gives you a little pop-up. So since this one here I clicked on that was about pot library policies, it popped me right into the policies section of our help page. So there are five different sections of the um, application, uh, governance and planning. And you can see here the first one meets, you meet the 12 minimum qualifications to be designated a public library. So that one gets automatically checked off for you because you've clicked those 12 on that first screen. Hmm. Then we've got you, um, if you have your community's response plan submitted to me, um, and then you see here, you can see you start seeing how many points you can earn for each item. You can get 10 points for having your plan, uh, five points for saying you were, uh, review it annually. Um, for these library policies, you get one point for each policy that you have that you can check off here. So you can see how many points you can earn for each item. Um, since this is just our... Uh, Preview application is just a static page. I can't click on anything to make anything change on here. Um, but uh, you will be able to when you're in your live form. Uh, what also will pop up as well is up here in the upper right, there will be a box that shows how many points you've earned and it changes as you click and unclick things as you're going through the application form. So I have a running total of how many points you've earned that you can see if you've reached bronze, silver or gold level as you're going through the application form. Um, so we've got our governance and planning is all about, do you have that community's response plan? Do you have policies in your library? Do you have a technology plan, a separate plan just for how to make, update your technology? Do you have a friends group or a foundation? Um, and you see these here that um, after just the first 12 minute requirements, all of these are the green check. These are all items that are pulled in from the public library survey and our um, Library Commission's supplemental survey. Um, specifically the Friends and Foundation, this is something we ask on the supplemental survey. So that's automatically pulled in if you have those groups. Um, what kind of resources do you have to provide your library services is the second section. So this is about your income, um, the hours you're open. Um, so income being uh, your budget, your local budget money you get from your um, local township. Uh, village, township, or county. Um, what hours are you open? Um, do you meet said federal, state, and local codes for safety? Um, expenditures on staff, this is um, salary, uh, but benefits. Um, and this is also where you earn the points for um, a certification of your library director. And remember, you must, your library director must be certified, so this has to be checked off. Um, and then this just shows you at what level based on the size of your population. Um, what minimum level you have to be at. Uh, you see, this is just the minimum level. And if you remember looking over at the page for public librarian certification, which let's see here. Um, 
there are multiple levels. You just need to meet the minimum level based on what your um, population is of your community. So you can take uh, this and you, know, so you can see in order if you have um, anywhere up to uh, 2,499 is your um, local population, minimum high school graduate or equivalent level one. Um, and then you can earn points based on any additional staff. This is also based on though your population as well. So in order to earn the points, you have to have this many additional staff also certified in our program. So if you are in a, um, just the smallest libraries, you just need to have the director who's required plus one additional person. If your population is 2,500 to 4,999, you have to have an additional two staff to earn the three points and then et cetera, et cetera, up to additional four. Um, if you're the, the largest. You don't gain more points in, like if you're the smaller library, if you have like, you know, if you have four live four staff um, additional, you just have to have the minimum of two additional staff if your library serves this size population. Um, then here we have, what well, this is one of our comparisons. This would be an equal to or greater to the average or medium of your peer group. So this is a number, peer group, this is a number of staff. So we get into the peer uh, comparisons. Um, and then we do have here, are you um, helping uh, staff and boards to do public or professional development going out and attending conferences and workshops and things. Uh, technology is our next section here under um, resources. Do you have a uh, li library system, online library system? Do you have internet, telephone service, et cetera? Um, I'm gonna mention here, we are gonna be working on making an, uh, some a tweak to this technology section. We are working on the questions right now. We'll have this uh, done before the June workshops. Um, something we do not have in here, we've never had before, and it's been mentioned to us, is any questions about security, computer security, backing up your computers, um, restore and reboot software, um, keeping things up to date. Um, I know many of you have worked with Andrew Sherm Sherman, who's in our library development department. Uh, Sherm helps libraries with technology reviews and making sure they have all their everything up to date. Um, we're gonna be um, moving around some of these points and or adding some questions about if you have um, good security on your computers and if you're doing the up restore and update things. So I'll look for some um, additional questions about that being added in here, other ways that you can earn points. Um, then there's some questions about your collection. Um, does it meet the mission goals of your library? I hope it would. Um, weeding, annual expenditure, turnover rate, collection size, etc. All of these green ones just pulled in from your public library survey. Nothing you have to enter yourself. These ones that don't have the green, these are the ones that you can check yourself and then earn those extra points if you have all of those, if you meet those criteria. Uh, part three is about services. What services do you offer? Outreach programs, um, library programs, databases. Uh, part four is about collaborating and cooperating with other organizations, reaching out, reaching out and doing things with um, a local daycare or senior center um, or any other organizations um, participating in an advocacy day, uh, things just beyond your um, um, library. And the last section is on communication. How are you reaching, letting um, people know what you're doing in your library? Um, do you have policies on your website? Do you use any sort of social media? Are you putting up displays, um, reporting um, to your village boards, um, communicating, communicating with any other organizations in your community? So just getting the word out about what your library is doing. Uh, and then you just fill in your director person's name here and you can see here your point total is also being um, total up here at the bottom. And this one just says 96 to start with because this defaults. Um, preview application does the green check on all of the ones that would come in from the public library survey. <laughs> so if you meet all the public library survey criteria to start with, you've got 96. So not bad to start with. And then you just start checking off all the other ones um, to get um, your points. So that's the preview application. So you can look at this ahead of time yourself. It's just a static page just to see the kind of things that you will be asked for about and the thing, things that you could earn points on. So I highly recommend taking a look at this just to see, you know, if you're wondering, well, I don't know how many points I'll have, or I'm not sure what we, what could we do to earn more? Um, we, we can't re we're not reaching even that bronze level or we wanna get up to silver, what else can we do? Take a look at this preview application now before the live one goes live on July 1st and you can start planning 
deciding if you're going to do something. Um, maybe something you can do is, if some of these things are out of your control, I know, like budget and how many staff you have, but um, if you have programs that you do, uh, you can start working on those and having them ready and, and in your, in, you know, in, in you know the, the schedule of general things you do at the library so that you can check off those items. Um, if you cooperating with other organizations, maybe start doing that now, and then you'll be able to check it off on your application when it goes live on July 1st. Um, using social media, posting things in your library, offering a bulletin board for public use, all these things that you can earn points for. You can start doing them now in preparation for when the form goes live on July 1st and being able to submit this application later in the year. All right. All right. So and so that's the um, last thing is you have to submit that application to um, become accredited or reaccredited. <clears throat> and so that is the basics of the um, accreditation program here. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know I went through it quickly, but this is, like I said, just the overview. Um, those longer workshops that I'm going to be doing at the beginning of June, those are three-hour workshops each. Um, you, It's the same thing repeated at each session. You don't have to send, send four different workshops. You just send one. Um, and we will go into all the details, um, a lot more details of the questions on the applicant accreditation application form and a lot more detail on how to write that community needs response plan. Um, the plan is sometimes the thing that takes the longest for libraries to do, so we do go into that in great detail and help you out with that. Um, and all those different questions on the accreditation application form are also things that you need to you know, go into a lot more detail on how, what the, how those questions are, um, what they're all about and how their uh, the calculations are done. All right, so does anybody have any questions about accreditation that you wanted to know that I haven't answered yet? Is there anything I didn't cover that you're wondering about? Uh, is there anything um, that you wanted a little more detail on? Um, or a little after 11 o'clock, that's okay. Um, we did start a little after 10. And if you do have any questions that you want to ask right now, um, I wanna make sure I get them answered for you. I don't want you to have to wait. Uh, so, um, any questions, anything else you wanted to know, anything I didn't cover, anything you saw in here that you're thinking um, you wanted to know a little more about, uh, type into that questions section and let me know. <clears throat> no. All right, that's fine. You all know where to find me <laughs> here at the Library Commission. Um, so I think that'll uh, wrap it up for today. If you do have any questions, reach out to me. Um, if your library is due for reaccreditation this year, 2024, look for my email Ju um, July 1st. Um, let me just double check here in my calendar. Yes. Uh, July 1st is a Monday. So Monday, July 1st is when you will, I will be sending out the emails, uh, inviting either um, letting libraries know who they are, who are up for reaccreditation that you're due, and inviting any libraries that have submitted the public library survey and are not currently accredited, letting you know that you're being invited to apply. So Monday, July 1st is when that will go out, and then we will spend the next, the second half of the year um, working on that. Um, you can submit your plans to me, submit your accreditation application. Um, as I said, nothing in stone. We will go back and forth, and I will, um, if I need to have you make changes to your plans, this is all be done. We have until the end of the year, December 31st, to finalize everything um, and then get you your um, knowing what your accreditation level is and if you're reaccredited or accredited for the first time. So look for that information coming. All right. So thank you everybody for being here today. Um, I hope this, I know this is quick. Uh, uh, that's the point of it, just getting you a quick overview of the of process. Our um, Nebraska Public Library Accreditation Program we have here through the Library Commission. And hopefully this has gotten you a little taste, so you know what it's all about. Um, as I said, if you wanna know more details, sign up for one of our longer workshops that are coming in the beginning of June. All right, so that wraps up for today's show. 
I'm going to pop over here to our Encompass Live page, and you'll see we don't have a lot of things to schedule here. I am in conversation with people waiting to get some confirmation back, so don't panic. Um, we will have things being added to our schedule here um, soon, so keep an eye on here and when I announce um, the things that are coming up. We do have a regular pretty sweet tech session. It's always the last Wednesday of the month when um, Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, comes on and does a show for us on Encompass Live. Um, still waiting to hear what her topic might be for this month, but she will be here on May 29th to do that. Um, I mentioned archives. The show has been archived. It'll be in our show archives. Our upcoming shows are here, but underneath that, there's a link to our archive shows, which um, the most recent one will go on the top of the page here. So today's, um, this is the one from last week. Um, today's will be at the top here. I uh, should have the recording up and ready by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest. Um, so keep your eyes open for that notification. Everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show, get an email from me letting you know um, that it had been um, posted. We also push out onto our social media. Oh, we have a Facebook page. Slowly, there we go. <laughs> uh, where we post uh, reminders. Here's a reminder about today's show, um, when the recording is available. Uh, we post on here as well. We um, use the hashtag Encump Live, a little abbreviation of our live of our show name to post on here and on our we have Twitter and the Instagram accounts as well. So if you like to use any of those, give us a like there for Encompass Live or through the Library Commission's accounts to keep up to date on what we're doing. Uh, while I'm here on the archive show, there we go, um, you can search to the archives, see if we've done a show on a particular topic. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current. That is because this is our full archives, and I'm not going to scroll all the way down because you can see this is a long, long list. Um, we have all of our shows going back to when the Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So this is our 16th year, sweet 16, of Encompass Live. Um, so just pay attention when you are watching an old show, though, to the original broadcast date. Um, many of the shows will be perfectly fine to watch, stand the test of time, um, good resources. But some things will become old and outdated. Resources will change, um, might not exist anymore. Uh, links might be broken. People will not work at the same institution as when they uh, presented for us. Um, so just pay attention and just watch, uh, pay attention to that original broadcast date. It's on every single one of these, you know, when the show first was broadcast live. Uh, but um, we'll always keep our show archives here, even the old outdated ones. This is something, you know, libraries do, keeping things for historical purposes. Um, and as long as we have a place to host them, which right now is the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel, we will always keep our show archives available for you. Um, and I'm going to see if I can find here. I mentioned that we did do, let's see. There we go. Yes, just um, July of last year, we did, um, we've actually done a couple of sections. We did one in 2022 and 2023. Um, maybe we're due for another update. Um, but uh, there were some changes to the Nebraska statutes um, last year that required us to do an update. So we do have a session from just last year about the Open Meetings Act. Uh -huh. So definitely, I recommend looking into that if you need to know more about it um, for your board, your library boards that need are required to uh, follow them. All right, other than that, that wraps up for today. Um, oh, we do have a question that just came in. Uh, where can we see if our employees are current in certification? Ah, okay. Um, you, uh, an individual can look up their own certification uh, here. Um, you can look up your library board. You can look up your library board itself on here. Um, individuals can look up <clears throat> their CE records. Um, you as a director can't look up your staff, but what you can do is um, contact Holly Duggan and ask her. She can check that for you. Um, so individuals can look up their own records um, themselves. So you could have your staff go and check. Um, boards, you can look up your library board status and see if they are um, certified or not. Um, and in here, if you look at the library's um, record, it will show you what they've watched, what they currently have, how many hours they need, and when their certification is due. Um, looks like uh, Ainsworth is doing pretty good here. They just need three more by September. Should be no problem. So, 
So yes, you can look up your board, but contact Holly if you want to know if any of your staff um, where they are in their certification. Any other last minute desperate questions you want to ask me before we officially wrap things up today? All right. All right. Then thank you everyone for being here. Um, keep an eye on our schedule um, to see when I get our new our new shows up um, that we have coming up. Um, hopefully I'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live and uh, good luck with your accreditation. Um, hopefully some of you get reaccredited or might have some new libraries. Look for those emails July 1st. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>